Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? He's right here. Look on the screen. Look at him. Right there. See him? Good. If you've not kept up with children's television since you started getting old and fat and grey like me, then you probably don't know, but every 15 seconds they seem to release a new series of Scooby-Doo and they replace the dated clothes of the 60s on the cast with other clothes that will also date horribly at some point. Um, Scooby-Doo originally appeared on American screens in 1969 and it featured four teenagers, Fred, Daphne, Velma and Shaggy and of course the eponymous Mutt as they disprove the existence of ghosts um, who are actually just cynical con men trying to uh, extort money out of people. Um, if Eterica Cora saw the dream machine turn up I think he'd be running to the hills faster than Mo Farah in slippers down a greased slide. Personally. Uh, on top of the almost infinite mountain of Scooby-Doo series there has been numerous Buffy starring movies and uh, weird crossovers with the WWE, with Batman um, and with the Adams family. And there were two Spectrum games and the reason we're only covering the first one and not Scooby and Scrappy-Doo is either because nobody likes Scrappy-Doo or because I'm going to be doing a top 10 on high techs vast array of budget animated adaptions soon. Um, which is it out of those two? I mean, I know the second one seems a little bit specific, but come on, it's because nobody likes Scrappy-Doo, isn't it? Scooby-Doo in the Castle Mystery was developed in 1986 by Gargoyle Games for Elite and was released on the Spectrum, the Amstrad, the Commodore 64 and the Commodore Plus 4. The scope of the game was originally much grander than the platformer we got. Press releases and screenshots from early publicity revealed that the original idea was to make the title an interactive cartoon, a bit like Dragon's Lair, which on a Spectrum 48K with no memory and tape loader sounds extremely ambitious, and so it proved to be. In the game we actually received, we got your standard platform fare with the cowardly Great Dane on a quest to rescue his human mates from a series of glass bottles in a gargantuan haunted castle. Or not haunted, as ghosts aren't ever real in the Scooby-Doo mythos. Some of these costumes must be pretty uncomfortable for the villainous crooks inside them, however. The game takes some liberties with the title character, with Scooby seemingly sewing back on his bravery balls taken from his neutered body as a yapping pup, because he actually attacks the ghouls instead of running away. His attack is very relaxed, however. Rather than attempt to savage the ghosts with his slavering Great Dane Moor, he just sort of camply bats at them with a paw while stamping his foot. The animation and graphics are pretty good in general. There's some love in the artwork of the sprites of both Scooby and the denizens of the castle. The 9 out of 10 given by your Sinclair seems a little inflated, but it's not far off that in fairness. Crash similarly gave Shaggy's dog story, do you see, Shaggy's dog, um, a high score of 91%. It's a competently put together title then and an excellent chance to break out my god-awful Scooby-Doo impression. <laughs> Shaggy, help! It's not great, is it? But no, it's a good game. I recommend it. Give it a go. <laughs> 